Okay, thank you. Now everything is settled, you can start. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, so I'm Stephen Harrison. I'm writer and tech lawyer. And uh, within the Wikimedia community, I'm probably most well known as a journalist who's covered Wikipedia um, for the past uh, several years now. Um, but I'm also a novelist, and I have a novel coming out on Tuesday. I'll show it here. It is um, The Editors, and it's a novel that takes inspiration from Wikipedia and Wikipedia editors. And um, so I'm going to be talking about it a little bit today. Uh, and I like that this session is in the wild ideas portion of the conference. So um, just on the agenda here, I'll give a little bit of back background about the book, um, give a short reading, and then I'll um, answer questions. And we can either do them by microphone or virtually, um, but we can do those questions at the end. So in terms of uh, my journalism background, um, I came to Wikipedia covering it as a freelance journalist um, around 2018. One of my first pieces was about how do, um, or who, who writes the articles in New York on the New York subway, right? Or the Wikipedia articles and sort of that piece. And then I was fortunate enough to get sort of a recurring column in Slate called Source Notes. Um, many of you might've read it, uh, that really focuses on Wikipedia and internet knowledge. Um, and I, through that, you know, sometimes the pieces are news reporting based. Uh, for example, how is Wikipedia covering a burgeoning news event like COVID-19? Um, I also got to cover the Wikimania conference uh, back in back in Stockholm um, in 2019. And um, some of those pieces were also just investigations driven by my own curiosity, such as who edits the Wikipedia page for celebrity when, when they die. And um, I've been able to do some profiles of uh, Wikimedians, people like Emna Mazzuni or um, Rosie Stevenson Goodnight, uh, who uh, is responsible or part of the team that does Wiki Project, Women in Red, and, and, and of course, uh, Stephen Pruitt. And um, I think that one of the things that we found at Slate is that people were really genuinely interested in these Wikipedia news stories. And, and they, they got pretty high views and, and, and uh, readership when they came out relatively speaking. And I think that that's kind of interesting that people uh, reading news on the internet were interested in these Wikipedia stories. They didn't always want to take the second effort and become a Wikipedia editor themselves or a Wikimedia editor, but they did They did like the stories. So I was covering Wikipedia as a journalist. And so you might ask, why did I not write a long form nonfiction book? Why write a novel? And I think part of it was just kind of a gut feeling um, that the story would work better as a suspense novel. I think that readers, they get the idea that the internet encyclopedia is important and the idea influence, that the information on it influences us every day, but it always seems very mysterious um, how, it how, it, how it's created, who the editors are. And so I thought that that kind of had some dramatic potential for a mystery. Um, uh, the second item here, characters, I think that, you know, in, in probably this group, uh, and the attendees here at the conference know better than most that Wikimedians, they can be larger than life characters, that when there are these arguments and these debates, Wikimedians, their, their voices come through online and the way they type and the way they write. And I like that idea that you could kind of express someone's character um, in, in how they um, act, interact with people online in these debates on an internet encyclopedia. And kind of the third bullet here um, for example, the New York Times recently did a list of the 100 most influential novels um, of the 21st century. And a lot of people took issue with that list. The, the, these books are all from 2001 to 2024. But one of the things that I noticed is that that list did not include any novels that really meaningfully engage with the internet. It's, it's really strange. It's almost like our fiction and our literature isn't including depictions or representations of internet um, internet culture. And if, if there would ever be a time, it would be this period, right? You know, the first um, quarter of the 20, 21st century. And so I, I like this idea of like including uh, or representing internet culture, including the internet culture of a internet encyclopedia in a novel. Um, and I think that's, you know, important because literature can be a way to develop a deeper, deeper understanding of our lives. And um, that's one of the things I was trying to do with the book. So I decided that I wanted to write it as a novel. 
And I began going in earnest in February, 2020. Um, and then of course, March of 2020 is when the pandemic really impacted us here in the States and we began having lockdowns and um, social distancing. And, and I knew then that, that I wanted the pandemic to be sort of the central informational conflict um, that the characters would encounter in the novel. Um, ended up getting the publishing contract in February, 2021. And with my publisher began a pretty long de developmental editing process, um, trying to make the story just engaging, as engaging as we could, more of a page turner um, and also really accessible to readers who might not have ever edited an encyclopedia or internet encyclopedia like Wikipedia or even really thought much about that world. And, um, and then I did throughout the process um, during that developmental stage, I reached out to a number of Wikimedians, maybe some, some of the people there in the room um, to be beta, beta readers. And sometimes they'd read a chapter or a scene, a couple of them read drafts, but uh, whether, and, and I would say they're mostly involved in English Wikipedia, English Wikipedia editors, administrators kind of gave some feedback and um, was able to incorporate that. I think it allowed me to give an element of realism to the novel. Now, in some cases, it's it's still a novel. I was still trying to make it as engaging of a story as I can, and and uh, and and that that is kind of the trade off. You want to make it um, as uh, as engaging as you can, and without and sometimes that means not not representing you know the things the way things are exactly on Wikipedia. Um, it's not a one to one comparison. Um, and actually, in the book, it's referred to as Infopendium is is the Encyclopedia project that people are working on. But I do think it has a hint of realism that I think makes for a more exciting story. So the storyline, the kind of the Hollywood pitch that um, of the novel would be, it's a thriller set around an online encyclopedia. And it has um, four main viewpoint characters. So there's Morgan, she is the investigative journalist. And with her character, uh, she's working as a freelance journalist full time. And she, I think one of the things I wanted to have for her character is kind of represent the financial hardship of contemporary journalism, kind of working in that industry and trying to sell and pitch stories um, in, in the current media environment. And then we have Alex. Uh, Alex is a younger, uh, highly dedicated Infopinium editor, uh, aspiring to be an Infopinium administrator. And for various reasons in this backstory, you find out why um, Alex is very concerned with misinformation on the site and identifying and removing that misinformation. Then you have Ed. He's someone who's been around with the encyclopedia since its inception. And um, he has a lot of concerns that the project is in decline. And then finally, you have Nevin. And he's an undisclosed paid editor violating you know, the site's terms of use. And he operates several sock puppet accounts and is trying on behalf of his paying clients to um, make sort of PR, do, conduct digital PR for them to improve the way they're, um, they, they are described on the internet encyclopedia. And so I promised to do a fireside reading of the book. Um, and, uh, and, and so I'll show or I'll, I'll read just a brief portion for the, for the group there that's in the room and, and, and then virtually. Um, just to kind of set up the scene, and I recognize that this is um, the scene is, is, is slightly meta to be reading this at Wikimedia or at Wikimania, um, and, and, and for reasons that I'll describe, you'll realize why it's a little bit um, a little bit of a meta scene. But I thought it, I thought it could be really fun. Um, so in this scene, we have Morgan again. She's the journalist character, and she's attending the Infopendium user conference. But it's it's not in Poland. In this case, it's um, it's at Columbia University in New York, and it's on the campus there. And uh, at this particular, um, the way the conference is being done in the novel, it features both in-person and virtual attendees. Um, and, and actually the comments from virtual users, the chatter is appearing on a live screen behind the that's behind the stage, right? And um, they have it set up this so that attendee chatter can go in through that way. It's 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 sort of a different um, different I know than than it would be at a normal uh, Wikimania, but I think that um, is part of the story. And before the conference begins, um, Morgan 
is sitting in the audience and she meets a highly active Infopendium editor and her name is Deja. Deja is a librarian at the New York Public Library. And so they had just talked a little bit about um, uh, her involvement on the project. And then you have the site's founder, this is Infopendium's founder, Gerald Budd, and he's preparing to present a significant award. Um, okay, and so with that set up, I'll give a, you know, a brief fireside reading. Gerald's voice stayed flat through the finale. Let's give a warm round of applause to our editor of the year, user Deja Noom. The crowd erupted with thunderous cheers and applause. Morgan looked over to Deja and saw her mouth had dropped. Apparently, Gerald had not provided her with any notice. The cluster of librarians around Deja showered her with encouragement and urging her to take the stage. At long last, Deja stepped into the aisle. Even standing at full height, she was surprisingly petite with the compact build of a gymnast. Amid the deafening applause, applause, a deluge of clapping emojis and celebratory remarks flooded the chat screen. As Deja made her way on stage, the sound technician hurried over to her, clipping a microphone to the collar of her t-shirt before rushing back to the audio controls. Gerald stood side by side with the Deja on stage, his grin stretching wider than it had throughout his speech. I take it that you're surprised? Deja gulped and nodded, drawing sympathetic laughter from the crowd. After providing, providing an awkward pat on her arm, Gerald gestured toward the podium. Feel free to say whatever you'd like. Deja stood still, a question mark in her eyes. Maybe something about how you became an editor, Gerald offered. She stepped slowly to the podium. Um, I got involved in college after I took a course in post-colonial literature. It's not a subject most people know about, but it was a great class, actually. We studied lots of African and Indian and Caribbean authors who were not featured in the so-called canon. But even though we read their published works in class, I noticed that none of these authors had articles on Infopendium. No one could find them easily online. I hadn't even heard their names until I got to university. That gatekeeping, it didn't sit right with me. So that's when I started making people's pages, writing articles for those who'd been left out. This prompted a murmur of approval from the audience. Morgan hadn't quite thought about it before, the importance of simply being on the website. After all, her batter, battle on the C. Michael Wentworth page was not whether he should be included, but how the text would make him look. And once, and once you started, it's fair to say the hobby caught on, Gerald said, nodding rapidly as if to move this part along. Do you have anything else you'd like to share about your work these days? The offstage technician had finally adjusted the spotlight so that it pointed at Deja, New, Deja, silhouetting her short figure against the wall. Sure, I would just say, well, I'd say that Gerald was partly right. Though her tone was apprehensive, her words reverberated through the chamber. The sound guy must have cranked the volume on her mic. Infopinium's growth is so impressive. Personally, I think the project is amazing. It's free. It gets updated constantly. However, from my perspective, there's still a lot of inequality. The Crown responded, mostly with murmurs of approval, and the loudest support came from Morgan's section from a librarian who enthusiastically yelled, amen. Deja went on, her voice deepening. It's sad that only one fifth of the biographical articles on this website are about women. The odds for people of color or those with disabilities are even worse. Entire chunks of history, black history, non-Western, non-colonial perspectives of history, these will all these all get less attention on the project. All at once, the air was thick with whispers. Morgan's eyes darted to the right screen where she could tell something was wrong. Usually more messages flitted across the surface for a fraction of a second before new ones replaced them. But this particular block of text clung like a barnacle, refusing to let others' words flow through. This award is illegitimate. This user does not respect aim for neutrality. Infopendium must return to its original purpose, now. Morgan leaned forward, squinting at the static block. Her pulse was up. Yes, she felt bad for Deja, but this was exciting. Four lines of simple text had taken over the stage. Who wrote this, Morgan wondered. Whoever it was, they intended to make a statement. Not only that, a spectacle. And in a strange way, Morgan worried that she'd somehow willed this into being. Throughout Gerald's keynote speech, she'd been searching for angles to make this interesting, a memorable anecdote for her article. Now she had it, a sneak attack. At the first stirrings of the crowd, Deja had spun around to see the screen. When she turned back, her face had drained of all its color. 
I'm not suggesting that infopendium is all bad. Not at all, she said, her voice trembling. I'm only pointing out that we should keep developing. That's one of our core principles too. It's just that no one else has mentioned it. Morgan looked back behind her to the dimly lit tech booth perched at the back of the auditorium. The man there was scrambling to regain control of the situation, frantically typing at his keyboard, but his efforts were futile. When she turned back, the interruption still shone like a massive bruise on screen. The whispers of the crowd grew louder with each passing moment. Shut it down, turn off the monitor, just ignore it, unplug it now. From the back of the auditorium, a loud burly voice bellowed, kill the feed. Morgan watched as Deja rushed to wrap it up. Like I said, please keep developing. Um, I guess I'll end with that. Her final words were met with an uncertain smattering of applause as the audience grappled with the appropriate response. In the moments that followed, Gerald guided Deja away for pictures while the discordant notes of New York, New York came tearing through the air again. It appeared that Deja's brief moment in the spotlight was already coming to an end. The flustered technician bolted onto the stage and to pull the cord. Thinking quickly, Morgan raised her phone and snapped a photo of the mysterious message before it vanished. As the crowd dispersed, Morgan soaked up all their speculation about what had happened, cybersecurity breach, professional hacker, inside job. So far, there didn't seem to be a leading theory. Between her eavesdropping, Morgan wondered how she could possibly determine who was behind the attack, especially before her deadline. Burrowist wanted her story by tomorrow. Slowly, Morgan made her way through the crowd, her bag already starting to feel heavy. If only a non-cyber disruption was a topic covered by the handbook. And so that's the end of that expert. I think what's kind of neat about the novel is so we just had that that scene where um, someone was interrupted at a at a, at a user conference and um, and then later on you get chapters from the hacker's perspective what were they thinking what was their motivation and that that idea of sort of imaginative empathy getting in into the heads of the characters is I think one of the one of the benefits of the novel and um, and so so yeah I think I've got about five minutes remaining on time, um, I wanted to see if there there were any questions. I've got some questions that I had just collected by email um, through another forum, or if anybody in the room or online has questions, I can take them now. Do we have a question? No. Then we can move with the email ones. Sure. Yeah, one of the questions that I got is, um, how did I simplify the policies? Because uh, Wik Wikipedia, English Wikipedia, is known for having a number of policies, um, and how to simplify that? Because you have to imagine that people reading a popular or a suspense novel, suspense novel about Wikipedia or about an internet encyclopedia, well, a lot of them won't be familiar with with editing it. And what I try to do is I kind of try to boil it down to four aim policies. Um, and sort of like principles, um, and, and I'm showing them here on screen, it's aim for neutrality, uh, this, this idea of neutrality, but it's also just something that's um, being aimed for that people aspire to. Um, we need better sources, um, this idea of uh, curating and reflecting information that's in, in better sources. I, uh, with, with we need better sources, um, one of the things I think that it also applies to the the journalist perspective too, right? Are you creating a reliable source that can then be used on the Internet Encyclopedia Project? Um, three, and, and amenity is fundamental. Um, I think that that's really trying to enshrine that concept because it comes up so often in the novel. I mean, the novel, one of the big themes is geopolitics. Um, Nevin, one of the main characters, is operating from China, Uh in, in both real life and in the novel, China is censoring the internet encyclopedia and, and there's some risk there. So there's there's his aspect of anonymity, but also, you know, that is that is a principle of the project that people can contribute um, and, and, and be faceless, right, without revealing their identities and just keep developing. Um, and I think that the characters conflict over what, what keep developing means as a principle. Is it, um, is it sort of... Uh, you know, is it trying to move the project in a particular direction? Is it, um, is it, uh, how, what are the trade-offs between quality and, um, and, uh, 
and 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 just just having more articles, more um, different types of articles. And so, yeah, that's one of the questions that I got. Uh, we um, have a question from yeah. the chat. Where can we get the book? Yeah, so you can get it. So the book the book releases Tuesday, releasing on August thirteenth. You can get it um, online, pretty much wherever books are sold. But I will say that right now, it, the distribution is better in the U.S. Uh, although the electronic copies will be available internationally, it's it's a bit more for shipping. So all the um, uh, online places, Amazon. I'm also encouraging people to go to Bookshop. That that's an option in the U.S. to support your local independent bookstore and Barnes and Noble, places like that. And it comes out on Tuesday. And then um, also the audio book will be coming out um, in the fall. Um, and I'm excited. I'm not reading that. Uh, there's a voice actor who's doing that. Um, and uh, that that that's another option for people. Um. Are you um, considering going on book tour, and uh, are you considering a sequel? I uh, this 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 book took a lot. I'll answer the first question for or the second question first. Um, took a lot out of me, so I'm not sure about a sequel. But I am going on a book tour. Actually, I uh, the book was supposed to come out August six originally, so I was planning to be there in Poland, but um, but then the publisher. Uh, for various reasons, moved it to the 13th. So that, that's coming up in a few days here. So it's just a little bit better for me to be here. But I am going on a book tour. The uh, I'm based in Dallas. So there's location here in Dallas. Then DC uh, is the New America Foundation is doing an event. Um, that's uh, Thursday after the next. Um, and then St. Louis. And then I actually have an event in, in London, which is at the New Speak House. And that is um, August 29th. I've got on my website, or I can send it out by email. I've got all of those, and then still working on an event in New York. But it looks like that'll be in September, um, and then that's at the Strand Bookstore in New York. Yeah, I'm excited to go on tour and meet people. One more last question. Mm -hmm. I'd just like to ask: um, How would you feel if this book was? Uh, notable enough, it became notable enough that it got its own Wikipedia article. How would you feel about that? Well, I would feel better if the book got a Wikipedia article than me myself. I mean, I've been in this long enough to know that people who have Wikipedia pages, I mean, they, they, they write me emails and they're saying, I don't like this, I don't like this. So I would love for the book to get a Wikipedia page. That would be cool. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I think I think so. Um, and And maybe there's an argument that is notable to the Wikipedia, Wikimedia community. Um, so that'd be great, actually. But um, I, I think one thing I wanted to say here is I'm, I'm really happy to send out advanced reader copies to Wikimedians. I've been pretty liberal with that, um, especially in the lead up to the release. And um, you can email me to get in touch if that's of, of interest to you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for answering. Thank you for joining. And uh, thanks again. Yeah, thanks so much. And thanks to the conference organizers. And I hope you enjoy the book.